everybody, it's Sam from Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I need to start making some gift bags for Christmas. I've already done the pop-up one with the pop-up piece on the front, but I want some bigger gift bags. So I do like to make these. So I've got this one here, which is a slightly different size to what I've done on the channel before. I always try and make sure there's some kind of difference in the sizes, but I have a whole playlist up here of gift bags and specifically flat pack ones, which is what this one can be. So um, I've used my new papers, which are I'll show you in a moment. And I've just already tied it together there with the bow around the handles. But um, yeah, just to you know, show you really how it will come together. But I'll, I'll show that when we do the um, make the next one. But they're gorgeous papers. It's a really nice style. I like the handle with this one as well. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to say. So let's start making it. Okay, so I just thought I'd show these stamps again because I shared these in a, my last What Did I Get? These are by Simply Creative, which is part of Craft Label. And um, they're only a pound and they've got lots on their website. So it's all linked below, but that's what I've used. Um, I've got that one underneath the paper pad for the tag. And these ones are the slightly bigger ones. And that's the one I used on the recent selection boxes that I've made. And these are only £1.25. Now I do have a discount code as well so by the time you add that they're an absolute bargain so have a look check it out it's a great website there's loads of other really good things on there and they've actually got a big clearance section as well at the moment so I've got my ribbon that's the one I'm using today <laughs> it's actually the joy to the world I use the peace on earth and then the joy to the world I'm using this one embossing powder and it's the rose gold and then I've already got my handles because I need to die cut one more which I'll show you in a moment so I'll give you the measurements for those but these are the card making magic a5 oval dies really handy ones to have in your sash and then this is the paper pad so it's the winter sparkle and it's beautiful and I've chosen so I've got that paper on this bag you can see the some of the stars got glitter on them for this one I'm using two sheets here so you do need 12 by 12 to make this bag but you could take the design of this bag and put it into the I don't know I think I've got about probably 30 plus gift bags you know so you can lots of people go onto the playlist take bits from the tutorial they've watched and then kind of mix them with other things so check that out but you'll see there I've already heat embossed the joy to the world and these tags so I've taken this one as well again this is what I shared it's also part of that collection and you get 12 printed tags and I've just used those so everything matches so let's start scoring and then I can go through these bits with you in a moment. So it's a deconstructed one, which is what I like to do when I make bigger gift bags. So here I have two pieces. Now they're, they're, they're slightly, one side is slightly shorter than 12. So it's 12 inches wide. So if you've got directional paper, this is gorgeous, this one, just make sure it's the right way up at this point. So that's your 12 inch width. Then when you pop it on its side, mine's 11 and 5 eighths. Now the reason I've done it at 11 and 5 eighths is because I wanted to cut it so it finished with the top of these, this strip of words here, because it kind of had a bit of just some you know like a quarter it was like that on the top and I just think it didn't look so good so I've just trimmed that off so that's why mine's that height yours can be any height you want so if you want it to be the full 12 keep it at 12 but you will have to change the side pieces but you can come down as short as you want so you know you could do nine eight so if you've got something specific to go in the bag this is when you can change the height I'm going to score it three inches because that's my that's going to be the width of the bag so three inches is the base so when we fold this just so you can get more of an understanding that's now the front of the bag that's the base so that's what I mean this height you can reduce down or slightly increase it you might even have a three or you know bigger that's how you would do it so you want to do that on two pieces so again I've already scored this one at three inches down the side there now if you do change the height of yours, then you'd need to change it on these pieces as well. But you want to keep the width the same. So these are two pieces of four by 11 and 5 eighths. Okay. Along the four inch side, you want to score at half an inch and at three and a half. And that's our tabs that we're going to be using to stick them to the main front and back. So again, half an inch and three and a half. And then you're just scoring along the long side again at three. But whatever height you've decided here, you know, yours might be obviously shorter. So two pieces of that size, two pieces of the 12 by 12. Then for the handles, I'm using these dies here. I'll just give you the measurements. So the this is to make the frame, but also to cut my handle. But once you see what I'm doing, you can use it, you can do any size. You could also do square, circular, triangular if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. But the middle one is four and three quarters, and then the outer one is 
five and three eighths. And the height is two and a half and then uh, about three inches. Okay, now I've actually die cut them. The top one is in the rose gold and I've die cut two more in white. I'm going to stuck them together using the cloud glue so that's a nice strong handle. So that's what I'll do in a moment is I'll cut that one and then I'll cut two more in white cardstock and stick them together. Okay, so that is all of the scoring and now you just want to burnish those score lines. Okay, so with these two pieces here, you just want to do a little bit of cutting. So along the bottom here, you want to cut up both the score lines and then remove it, but take a little you know, wedge off the next piece. So you just cut in on an angle there, like so. You also want to take a wedge out of that. So now I've shown you that one, I can just come into this one slightly off there and just don't matter if they're even a bit wonky. <laughs> it all gets hidden, but by taking a bit off the outer edge, it just stops any of that hanging out the sides. And then I'm also just going to take a little bit off of the top, like so. Same as, you know, same way I do all my gift bags. And then again, I'm just going to do this one. Okay, so we've got our two side pieces and then we've got our front and our back. If you are going to put heavier things in, I always say reinforce the bases with some heavier weight cardstock or even some like grey board just to really give it some strength. Now we just want to start putting it all together. So I'm going to grab one of my side pieces here. I'm going to use the Kalau. So take a little bit, slightly longer to dry just because I'm using this shiny surface card or well, this coated is probably a better word, but I'm just going to pop it down there and then it does give me that wiggle room. Always line up your base score line when you're doing your gift bags because you can always trim if anything's a little bit off at the top. But you'll see there that lines up nicely. And I'm just bringing it right up to the score line so that when I go to fold it, this will all still look nice. It's not gonna bend or anything. Okay, so that's that one there. I'm gonna just carefully flip mine over like so and then I'm just going to fold that bit back over. And if you do that while the glue is still a bit wet you can see that I've got a really nice side to the bag and that's obviously what everyone's going to see. Then I can move along to this one and again I'm just going to run my glue all down that tab and then again I'm going to focus on that base score line with the bottom of this side piece here. I like doing deconstructed bags, even if I'm making a smaller bag and I can fit the side and the front all on one piece of cardstock, I still like to sometimes deconstruct it because I like to have the contrast of like the cardstock and then the pattern paper, or maybe two patterns that kind of clash but still work well. So um, yeah, it's always a fun way to do it and you'll see all them on that playlist. Okay, so now we want to do the handles because otherwise I'll forget and I'll carry on. So you can do this on these pieces before you attach them to this, but it really doesn't matter either way. But with the smaller of the oval shape here, so actually I'm just going to, I'm going to just die cut my two, I'm going to die cut the handles quickly because then I can take this apart and I don't need to worry about matching it up perfectly again. So I'm going to get these all die cut. So one in mirrored card and then if you want to make it stronger, two in white. Okay, so I've just done that one. Then I can take that smaller of whatever size you're using you just want the smaller one and I'm just going to use this now to draw around so I'm just going to grab a pencil and I want to pop it in the middle of this 12 inch width piece here so I'm just going to bring in my ruler I think I worked out it was roughly three and five eighths from each side so I'm just going to bring that one over a little bit that way so maybe three and three about there. I'm kind of happy with that. I think I'm okay. So, and then I want to make sure that I've got kind of halfway or half of the oval in this side here, the other half out. You could come up higher if you want. It's totally, you know, up to you, depending on what shape. You come in much, much um, lower as well. And then I'm just drawing around the inside there. Now you, you could come, you know, and do your handle quite far in. So just have a little play around. Now I'm just going to cut this one. You don't need to worry about the other one because you will use this as a template for that next piece. So you just then with your scissors. And don't worry if you're not too neat, it, you, you're going to hide it. It really, yeah, just don't worry yourself because like I said, it's all going to get hidden. So I'm just going to 
very carefully like so and then I'm just going to get my other one and just lay it underneath and just line it all up perfectly in fact I can just sit it in that section there so that works out quite nicely fold that over there for a minute there we go and then I'm now just going to draw around it again but that way you know they're both going to line up and then just cut that second one out okay so now we can carry on sticking it all together and then we can add the handles you can add the handles now if you want once you see how I do it but I'm just going to do it when it's all together so I'm going to add my glue now to this side Again, just line up that base score line together, sit down, just line up that, and then all I'm going to do is fold that piece over, bring this one, and add your glue. And by doing it this way, you can ensure it's going to lie flat as well, because if you don't want them to be fold flat and you want them to stay as a you know, solid kind of gift bag, but you maybe want to make a few and store them away. As I say in a lot of my videos, don't stick the bottom down when I go to do it and just leave it like this with the handles on and you can see how easy they would be to store away because, um, you know, you might want to start making bags for birthdays next year and things like that. Or you might be planning for, with all the time that a lot of us have had now, to be prepping all of your craft fair things for next year so there we go now I'm going to add the handles and all you want to do because you've got the larger one on the handle to make the handle it will sit over the piece that you've cut perfectly that's what you want to do is just line it up I need to bring it up just remembered you want to cut on the the outside not the inside so you can see there where I've cut around the inside you actually wanted to do the outside so I'm just lining mine back up and I'm just going to draw around the outside. Now when we lie that down you see it will stick over like so I'm just going to trim a little bit away there but you want to be cutting on the outside and I'll put a little um, or draw around the outside sorry I'll put a little thing up when I get to that bit so just to keep mine tidy and it just shows you can still cut this bit away even when the bag's together but I'm just going to just cut that piece out. Okay, so I've just done that. Now I can grab my glue and I'm just going to put a bead of glue that's the width of your handle. Okay, so just all along there. And then you can sit your handle and the inside will match perfectly with the curve of the inside, which is what I should have done. So it all makes sense. If you want to flip it over, you can see inside there, it all lines up perfectly. So I'm just going to lift that one up there, like so. You could have a thicker handle as well, I mean you don't have to do it just by using the next size up. You might want to go up a few so you've got a much thicker handle. Like I said, I like the delicate look of the thinner ones and I'm not going to be kind of carrying this a long way. It is more of a decorative feature rather than a practical feature, but you can easily make it wider. Okay, then I'm just going to do the other one on the back. Okay, so that's that all done. Now if you wanted to, you could cut another one, which I may well do in white, and then stick it on the inside here so it covers up that join. And it will also just add a little bit more strength, so I'm just to cover it up. So if you are, you know, worried that maybe yours is a little, your cuts are a little bit messy, then that's a good way to disguise it all. But that's all done. So then you want to decide on the front and the back. I'm not too... Maybe I'll go for that one. Yeah do this one as the front so I'm going to hold this up this one's going to be the back so this one's going to go down first and what I might do actually is just take I just fold that one inside so you can see what I'm doing I'm just going to take a little wedge off so whatever one you decide to be the back just take a piece off of either side there just so that it all folds in I always like to put my side tabs in between the back and the front 
and then I'm just going to cover it. Now this glue, as you all know, if you use the Kalau Clear All Purpose, it dries um, very, very stiff, so it becomes, it just strengthens everything. So although this is a paper, by the time this has the glue, it will feel like a cardstock. But this is a good time to reinforce it now by adding some grey board in between these two pieces. So I'm just gonna stick that one down and that one, like so. And I'm just gonna add a bit more glue. Like I said, the good thing with this glue is where you do have time and you can reposition as well. because there's some glues, once you kind of, you know, they stick together, that's it. <laughs> You're locked in. It's not the case with the Klaus. It's a really nice glue. And um, because it's a solvent base, it doesn't warp your cardstock either. So you can cover large areas. And then I'm just going to go inside there and just make sure that's all stuck down. Okay, so like I said, paper is perfect if you're adding clothing and lightweight things. If you're going to start using maybe bottles, you know, small beer bottles, things like that, I would definitely recommend this to be more of a cardstock. But now to make it fold flat, I'm not scoring this. Um, I do have lots of fold flat gift bags. I've got a playlist just for fold flat where I do the scoring. But because this is quite, well, it's still a cardstock, but it's, it's not too, too thick. I'm just going to push the sides in and then I can just work my way down. So like so, so I'm just pushing in, keeping everything all lined up. You can see it all lines up still on the front and you'll get to a point where you'll meet down here. See the triangle? And then you can just fold it away from you. It's just a quick cheat way to make a fold flat gift bag. As long as everything lines up and you've stuck everything down, but that, again, that's completely optional. You don't need to do that. Um, but if you do want to make them, stick them down, you can still store them away now, you can see. And then you can just go in and kind of burnish, you know, those kind of pieces. If you pop your score, uh, bone folder inside there because if you go on the top and burnish you might get marks on your nice cardstock but if you go in there it will just help it so it will kind of fold flat like so and then I'm just going to add my lovely ribbon here again can't remember where this is from <laughs> I always kind of pinch ribbons from other kind of packagings that people give me or it could be the end of a, a roll that I had but I'm just going to tie off a knot there and then with this one, so I've got one in the gold or the rose gold, I have my double sided tape and I'm just going to, because I want to have them kind of overlapping each other but I want you to be able to see a little bit of each of the colours. So I'm going to line up the hole there and then lift it slightly so you see a little bit of that gold there and then I've just cut this one using my oval dies and I'm going to have it so you can see it along the bottom there. So in fact that one I used a little bit of foam just to add a bit of dimension. So I'm going to pop a bit of foam just on the top half there and then just line up the whole little bit showing on the bottom and you've got plenty of room there to be able to write something on the back and now I can just thread it through here. So this is all ready for me to add my gift. I will just wrap it in some um, I'll probably try and see if I can get hold of some cream tissue paper and now I can just tie a nice big bow. And then another little extra is I've just cut this circle here. So if you want to get a similar size to me, this is about two and a half. And then I'm just going to eyeball this but because I've got the scallops I can kind of work it out. I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut it in half again. So I've got four kind of quarters there, segments. And then I'm going to stick them. You can do it on the back as well, but I'm just doing it on the front, on each of the corners. So I'm going to stick one there, one there, and one there, and one there. Again, completely optional, but it does just add a little bit more of a luxurious feel to the gift bag. Okay, there's the finished bag. I need to kind of position that a bit more so it's kind of in the bag space <laughs> rather than sticking out, but it gives you an idea anyway. And then if I just pop my hand in there, I can just pop that back out. You can see there how it looks. Aren't they lovely? Really, really 
yeah very good so check out the playlist I have loads of other gift bags on there and uh, you'll start to see a lot more kind of packaging ideas now because I need them so I only try to really share things that I genuinely use myself and that I need um, I think that's also good for you guys because you know that they are going to work so hopefully you enjoy all the future ones if you haven't subscribed I'd really appreciate it if you did just click on my face that should come up here and um, along with some other tutorials so I'll put the playlist for the fold flat in case you missed it so it'll probably be here just click on that one and then I'll put another nice bag of some kind there as well so thanks for watching and I'll see you all again very soon bye